اوكي Shalom, uh, Daniel chapter 3. <clears throat> okay, so now um, I, I will request a um, volunteer translator to the English uh, after I read the Aramaic. So um, does someone have art scroll or... Or Judaica Press? Uh, Rabbi, I'll translate for you. That's Teresa? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Uh, we, uh, you know, we discussed before the illness uh, a few months ago, uh, half of the book of Daniel's in uh, Aramaic. And uh, this was the actual language it was uh, the, the prophecy was given in. It was, it's not a translation. In fact, I mean, it's, it's really it's really um, interesting. Uh, instead of a, um, you know, the, 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 the classic comment commentary Targum, which date back, dates back to the Talmudic times, uh, that's, that's a translation. Uh, so it, instead of Targum to Aramaic, the Aramaic is Targum to Ivris, to Hebrew. So it's, it's very interesting. Uh, okay. So, Rabbi, it'll be uh, Daniel uh, uh, cha chapter 13, correct? Chapter 3. Chapter 3, Zero verse three. 13. Is that correct? Chapter 3, verse 1. Chapter 3, verse 1. Okay. Thank right. you. Nimcha Netzar Malka Avad Tzalem Di Dahav Rumeha Amin Shitin Pesayeha Amin Shis Akam Akimeha Bekivas Durabi Medinas Babel Unuva Unavu Chad Netzar Malka Shalach Lamich Nash Lach La hash dar panaya signaya ufaha vasa adar gizraya gidavraya de savraya tif toye the whole shield tone dinasa the mese la hanukas salma di hakem nubucha netzar malka. Okay, uh, Teresa, could you translate the first two verses? King Nebuchadnezzar made a statue of gold, its height 60 cubits and its width 60 cubits. He stood it in the plain of Dora in the providence of Babylonia. Then, Neb then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to assembly the uh, satraps, the nobles, the governors, the judges, the treasurers, the advisors, the guides, and all the providence for providential officials to come to the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Our, our group to, uh, main curriculum text is uh, the Arts Pro Blue Edition. Yeah. And an alternative uh, comment, uh, kosher commentary in English would be the Juda Judaic Depressed Edition. So now in the Judaica press, instead of statue, that word is translated as image. Uh, the Aramaic word uh, salma means uh, tselem, and you know perhaps uh, you're more familiar with Hebrew. Uh, so uh, tselem uh, usually is is translated as image, uh, but what kind of image was it? Was it a uh, two-dimensional or three-dimensional? Right. So, um, so th there is a very long introduction to this chapter in the art scroll. Um, not just the um, the Tanakh series, white white edition art scroll with the longer English commentary, but even here in the blue edition, there's a long uh, discussion of this. 
And uh, then it continues and gives the alternative view. Uh, this would be on page 28 in the blue edition, Daniel. Uh, the the uh, third line from uh, the start of the English. Another view proposed first by Rabbeinu Tam uh, and later adopted by Abarbanel, al Sheikh and Malbum holds that the image was not an idol, but a statue put up for the glory of the king. The purpose of the image was intertwined with Daniel's interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. In the dream, Babylonia was represented by the golden head. Thus, gold was, was the symbol for Babylonia. By constructing an image identical to the one in his dream, but made entirely of gold, he symbolizes the substitution of Babylonia, the kingdom of all gold, for the kingdoms represented by other materials. Uh, but, I mean, there is, the, the reason why this is an alternative view is because uh, people were asked to worship it. So, I mean, you would think it's simply an idol that, that um, but in other words, it was um, more a political statement, but in the, in the, in the pagan days of, of the kings of Babylon, uh, anything goes, it doesn't matter, they can worship anything, you know. It, it's, it's, it was pretty pathetic. Um, so, uh, so, so the, in either case, it was it, it would be asking uh, a Jew to perform idolatry to to worship this uh, whatever it was. So, but um, apparently, for this to be the alternative view, so we're talking about a three dimensional image, not a two dimensional image. Okay. Okay, let's go to verse three in the Aramaic. Beidayin miskanshin achash dar panaya signaya ufachavasa adar gazraya gav gedavraya desavraya. Tiftaye, Vuchol Shil Tone, Medina, La Chanukas Salma, Di Hakem, and the Muchanetzar, Malka, Vukayimin, La Kavel Salma, Di Hakem, and the Muchanetzar. Vukabroza, Kare, Vukhail, La Hon Amrin, Amamaya, Umaya, Vishanaya, the Idana, Di the Sish Maun, Paul Karna, Mashro Kisa, Kasros Sabcha Pesanterin Sumponia Vukol Zanei Zamara Tiplun Vesis Gedun Vetselam Dehava Dihakem Nebuchadnezzar Malka Okay, please, please translate through uh, ver verse 5, three, so 3, 4, and 5. Thereupon the rulers, the nobles, the governors, the judges, the treasurers, and the advisors, the guards, and all the providence officials gathered together for the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood facing the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. A herald called, uh, cried aloud, it is commanded to you, O peoples, nations, and languages. When you hear the, the sound of the horn, the whistle, the tambourine, the drum, the cymbals, the flute, and all kinds of music, you shall fall and prostrate yourself to the golden statue of King Nebuchadnezzar ha has set up. Okay, so, um, well, thanks for reading to that point. It gave me more time to collect myself. So I'll have to catch up to you. But um, so you, you read through verse seven in case uh, people were trying to. No, I, I read through five. You read through five? Yes. Oh, OK, I'm sorry. Um, you see, thank you for helping me. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, well, you see, it's it's very important to use a text, especially if the teacher is not well. And and it's helpful to have a text that the, the students can read. Uh, you know, they're, they're aware of the language. 
So our, our goal here is to give over uh, God's information and um, there's, there's no place for, for people to, you know, try to make themselves look good. It's, it's God's show, really. And we're just trying to understand what, what he's teaching us. Of all the stories in history, this is one of them that he shared with us for eternity. But it, it is in a different language that's harder to translate. So, you know, the, the, the importance of having a, a clear translation is, is all the more necessary uh, in, in this kind of a book. Okay, but so th there's like um, just a, a few points, though, even if you have it translated clearly, there's just a few points in the chapter that um, may not be cleared just from the translation. That's why having a, a really good English commentary is also important. Um, so we're going to try to cover some of these key points, just like we, we discussed about the alternative view about the statue idea. Okay. All right. Okay, so now, Teresa, I'm going to try to catch up to myself. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'll going to do a six and, and... <laughs> oh, thanks. That, that's pretty nice. Okay, uh, so, uh, so now I'll do a six and seven in the Aramaic. Umandi la yipel vis gud ba sha sa yis ramei la go atun nura yakid ta kol kavel dana Bezimna kedi sham in kol amaya kol karna ma ashroki sa kasros sabha pesant terin bechol zane zamara. Nuflin ko amamaya umaya vlishana vishanaya sagdin letselam dava di hakem nucha netzar malka. Okay, please translate six and seven, Teresa. Whoever does not fall and prostrate himself until immediately, excuse me, let me start over. Whoever does not fall and prostrate himself will immediately be thrown into a fiery burning furnace. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, the whistle, and the tambourine, the drum, the cymbals, and all kinds of music, all the peoples, the languages, and um, excuse me, the nations and the languages fell and prostrated themselves to the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Okay, so Baruch Hashem, thank you. Uh, Things have improved uh, in, in political pol politically in the world since then, you know. But um, it, the reason why democracy works is because it, there's an ethical and moral uh, um, concept behind it. Uh, you know, much of that comes from the Bible. Just just imagine if there was a democracy in the days of of of, uh, of the Empire of Babylonia, right? So then they say, "Okay, let's vote. What should what should be the fate of somebody who doesn't uh, who doesn't uh, bow to the statue?" And and so the people vote. Okay, the people have decided. Throw them into the fiery furnace. <laughs> the exact same result because the same ethical and moral choices were being made. Yeah, you understand. So is, is it just the perversion of Nebuchadnezzar, or is it simply a echo? of the spirituality of the, the people of that time in that place, right? And and Talmudically, there's a concept about, generally speaking, people deserving the leader they have. Sometimes they're given a leader worse than they deserve so that they'll cry out to God and he'll save them with a really good leader this time. But it's not, that's not always the case. Sometimes people just are not good and that's why they got the, the bad leader. Okay, so, but, okay, so this is not just a statue. So it's it's certainly understandable why um, Judaica Press is translating it as image. In other words, as an idol. But image, you know, in English doesn't fully help you to understand, is it three-dimensional, is it two-dimensional, what exactly is going on? So we know from the context that... 
it's some it's some sort of idolatrous, idolatrous worship. So therefore, calling in a statue may be the better choice in English. So, you know, you know, if, if I was going to translate it between those two words, I probably would prefer to use a statue. But uh, image is, is uh, literally correct. Rabbi. Yes. Hi. Oh, uh, somewhere in the Bible it says that we're made in the image of God. And this king, he wanted to set up his own image, fall down and worship uh, or replace God with this golden image of himself with the power of music. Um, I just think the parallel between uh, governments of today and them setting forth policy and things and having people follow it blindly sometimes. Well, now the the question is, I, I mean, there's a question on that. It, what type of statue was it? Was it a statue of Nebuchadnezzar himself, or it was a statue of uh, maybe a, a a giant sword? Was it a statue of something else? You know, it doesn't say that. Uh, uh, but uh, you had some another point you wanted to make, and and could you please state your name? Uh, my name is Ronald Copeland. Hi, Ronald. I um uh, the question I had was that uh, did Nebuchadnezzar King want to set up this statue, this image to replace God and have uh have the na nations sounds like more than one worship him as God and replace God? Is that what his motive was? Well uh well, according to, again, it's a debate among the, the sages. One school of thought believes that uh, this is purely for idolatry and promoting idolatry by idolaters was, was a fun activity. They, they enjoyed it. Uh, secondly, but why pain of death? According to another view, it was simply for political purposes because uh, Babylonia was the main conqueror in that time. So they wanted to be recognized as the world power. So they wanted everyone to bow down to their, the Babylonian idol to show that Bab Babylon was, was the, the pinnacle of um, human civilization at the time. Same thing that the Greeks but did it, later on. Right, right. So now if that's the case and it was not intended as idolatry, for, for a Jew it would still be idolatry because it, it uh, has the appearance of idolatrous uh, behavior. Uh, so it's it's it, at the very least it's causing a huge problem for the Jewish people, uh, and um, but the likelihood is that uh, it was uh, some sort of a idolatry for everyone. But it does not say that um, it was a statue of Nebuchadnezzar himself. Uh, now, has anyone read a commentary though that that mentions this idea that? It, what if it was a Nebuchadnezzar's uh, uh, image of himself? Did anyone ever see that? This is one of those areas where there's multiple opinions, so anything's possible. However, we try to limit ourselves to the scope of the kosher opinions because people could say anything out of a hat, you know. Maybe it was a, a giant idol of E.T. the extraterrestrial from the Steven Spielberg movie, you know, but I mean, that there's no foundation for that. There's no uh, logical inference to, to say that, right? So therefore, you have to have certain, uh, you know, certain uh, limits and parameters to your exegesis. Uh, so that's that's why we, using the, the commentary, you know, like like these books, it gives you a frame of reference of, of all the likely uh, kosher scenarios and logical kosher scenarios. And um, and then uh, we could choose from them to make a hybridized version of a commentary. But if we're, if we're not in that, that um, those parameters, so then we, we have a, te a tendency to um, uh, be a bit off because again, Everyone here is looking at this from a 21st century perspective. But this was written in the time when uh, it was normal among the nations to have uh, paganism. 
So that it had a totally different way of viewing things and thinking about things. And and uh, the there was a, um, a passion for idolatry that a person would could could take a a, a stone from from uh, from uh, you know from the ground and start to worship it. They they, they were so messed up. Uh, they just had they they had an imperative to worship idols uh, that was um, hard for us to understand. The Talmud relates that. In the days of the of the prophets of Israel, the power of prophet of uh, the power of uh, temptation for idolatry was much stronger than it is today. Uh, and the the sages of, of uh, the sages of the Talmud prayed that God should take away from the from the world the temptation of that severity to worship idols because there was no logical arguments you could say to somebody who just had uh, an, an insane desire to start worshiping anything they could find. Uh, so therefore, to the, the, the sage of the Talmud wanted the light unto the nations to reach the nations. But if people were like on drugs, the drugs of idolatry, they couldn't uh, process it. So therefore, for God's plan to work, uh, at that time, because of the needs of that generation, um, idolatry at that level had to go. But uh, God warned that if if he takes away idolatry of that level, he'll have to take away also prophecy. So as a as a uh, a way to balance justice and give people free will to still make mistakes. Because if if real-time prophecies and miracles were occurring after there was no strong temptation for idolatry. So then people would logically choose the proven prophet's words over over anything else, right? So in every case in, in, where there's idolatry in, in, um, in Tanakh, remember there is always uh, is a imperative for idolatry in the human nature in those days. And everyone who did, didn't worship an idol was um, kind of like uh, Joseph in in uh, in Potiphar's house. He 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 stayed away from immorality. So the people in the Bible who don't worship idols are all at a very high level. In fact, uh, there there's a um, discussion in in one of the Gemaras that uh, one of the sages. Of of is of Israel um, spoke to the soul of Ahav, King Ahab, who um, who started the Asherah, the tree worship in in um, the first book of Kings. Uh, so he said to the sage of Israel, "Had you been alive when we were there, you you would have uh, lifted up your ro robes so you could run faster and run after the idols uh, with us." Uh, so, again, even even the holy sages of the Talmud, it, at first it was um, hard for for some of them to understand how could a king of Israel like Ahab worship idols so strongly. It's because the temptation was a different level than after the uh, the prayer to end uh, the temptation for idolatry and the consequent uh, end of the era of prophecy. So what you're saying is it's very popular to run after idols, but it takes an exceptional uh, free thinker to, uh, or a Sadiq, not to join in. Right. And in fact, when the majority of people did not worship Baal, uh, it was it was actually amazing. But the Baal worship was human sacrifice. The any any kind of cruelty is an anathema to God. We see in the book of there that God was um, uh, he was patient 200 years with the northern tribes for constant idolatry. But the year that they turned to cruelty is the year that he brought uh, Assyria to conquer them. So uh, it was what, is, what is the difference between B B-A-A-L, Baal Master, and, and Baal 
which I guess is idolatry. B A L. Right. So, so well, the the, the B A L L is is the word for for master or 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 boss, you know. But uh, so apparently, they, to subjugate themselves to idolatry, they they wanted to make a new boss over themselves. Um, so it ended up uh, they decided to call it that. Uh, now, Baal worship was even worse than no problem. Uh, Baal, Baal worship was even worse than Molech. Molech was a a, a rite of passage, according to Ramban, uh, that uh, the, they would let the children leap through the flames. If they survive, they get this. They 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 weren't killed, but with the Baal worship, the priests of Baal would have a, uh, a everyone every one of them would have a knife. So if the flames didn't kill the child, the, the uh, priest of Baal would. Uh, so it, every every um, sacrifice of the Baal worship was ending in 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 bloodshed. So the that only ended with the destruction of the first temple. Then the people went into the area where where Ezekiel was living, and if if you study that book. He, he went through great physical suffering for the sake of the people. And uh, when they saw his suffering for their sake, uh, it, it moved them to repent. So the people repented in, in the days of Ezekiel from Baal worship, even though there was a great temptation for idolatry. It doesn't mean that uh, everyone was perfectly avoiding idolatry, but they gave up human sacrifice for idolatry. All right, Rabbi, before you go on, I wanted to make a statement, please. Um, I have cut off sure. everybody's video because it we're getting messages that the bandwidth is, is weak. So if you would please keep your videos off, it would give a Rabbi more bandwidth. I can do that. Thank you. Okay, so we translated through verse 7, Teresa, correct? Yes. Okay. okay and I'm going to read there, Mike, for, for verses 8 through 12. These uh, verses are actually shorter, so it, um, but it should be about the same amount of words as the, the previous uh, two or three verses I wrote. 8 through 12. Kol kabel dana beizimna karibu guvrin kas da'in v'achalu karatsehon di yehudaye ano v'amrin l'nevu v'chad netzar malka malka l'olamin chayi ant malka samta te'em di chol enash di yishma kol karna Mash Rokisa Kasros Sabha Pesantirin Vasu Ponya Vahosene Zamara Ipel Vis Vis Gud Batelam Dava Mandi La Ipel Vis Gud Yisrame Lago Atun Nura Yakid Ta Isai Guvrin Yehudain Yehudayin di Manisa Yashon al Avidas Medinas Babel Shadrach Meshach Bavednego Guvraya Ilain La Samu Allah Malkataim Le Lahach La Falchin Ulatelam Dahava Di Hakim Ta La Sagdin. Okay, please translate through verse 12, Teresa. Thereupon, at that very time, some Chaldean men came forth and defamed the Jews. They ex exclaimed and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. You, O king, issued a decree that every person who hears the sound of the horn, the whistle, the tambourine, the drum, the cymbals, the flute, and all kinds of music is to fall and prostrate himself to the golden statue. And 
and whoever does not fall and prostrate himself is to be thrown into the fiery burning furnace. There are Jewish men whom you have appointed over the affairs of the providence of Babylonia, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men have not accepted their decree upon themselves, O king. Our, your decree. Yeah. Your decree, thank you. Your God, uh, they do not your, worship. Your decree. Upon themselves, O king. Your God, they do not worship. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. These men have not uh, accepted your decree upon themselves, O king. Your God, they do not worship. And to the golden statue that they have set up. That you have set I'm having trouble. Sorry about that. That you have set up, they do not prostrate themselves. So I, I understand, Teresa. It's not in Hebrew, so you got to deal know. with the English. Uh, I'm right. having trouble with English today. <laughs> yeah. If it was Hebrew, I, you know, obviously it would be perfect. Okay, so... Uh, so we see this, it says, your God, they do not worship. And then uh, semicolon, and the golden statue you have set up, they do not prostrate themselves. So it's a separate thing from the the, the uh, fake deity of Nebuchadnezzar. See that? This allows it to have um, open interpretations. Uh, was it idolatry or not idolatry? But however, they it is, for a Jew, it would still be idolatry. There are certain certain restrictions on the Jewish people to not even look like uh, the appearance of uh, uh, doing the idolatry, and there is a law about um, not allowing oneself to be forced to do idolatry, uh, murder, or uh, severe immoralities. Uh, so anything like that. Uh, so it's uh, you know a, a, becoming a martyr is the lesser of the two evils. But we see in verse 8 uh, that men came forth and defamed the Jews. So it wasn't only since Nazi Germany, but going back in time, even before uh, even before the, the uh, second temple was built, before the current exile, during the previous exile before, uh, in the time of Babylonia, there was already anti-Semitism. So, so going forth and defaming, defaming means the, that's a lie, right? So, so what probably occurred was that uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which we we saw previously, were made officers in the courts of 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 Nebuchadnezzar. So, uh, they probably were explicit. You know, we mean no offense, but we just. Our religion does not, our faith does not allow us to participate in this, you know. You understand? Otherwise, why was it, would it say defamed when they're just saying what the facts to the case? But the fact was that there was no um, offense intended and they had a religious imperative not to. So therefore, uh, you know, they, they uh, were, were allowed to observe their religion according to previous decrees of Nebuchadnezzar. So why is there an assumption automatically that the current decree is also includes that? But rather, uh, they said it over in a way that, uh, that basically made it sound like they're rebelling publicly. Since they're rebelling publicly, so th there's no negotiation anymore. Uh, the king uh, is only concerned now with, with his honor and the the authority of the, uh, the monarchy or uh, the empire as however they, they would call us. Okay. So let's continue. That would be verse uh, 13. Beidai Nebuchad Netzar Birgaz Bechama Amar Hai Sayah, the Shadrach Meshach Mavad Nago, 
Bedain Guraya Ilain Hesayu Kadam Malka. Ane Nubuchadnezzar Vomar Lahon Hatsda Shadrach Meshach Vava Vave Gunago Le Lahai La Isain Khon Palchin Lutelam Dava di Hai Mes La Sugdin An Hain Isay La Isay Khon Sidin di Idana di Sishmaun Kal Karna Mashro Kisa Kasros Sabha Santarin Vasum Ponya Vahol Zane Zamara Tipulun Vasiskadun Vatalma di Avdes Benla Siskadun Bah Shasa, Sis Rom, Sis Ramon, the Go Atun Nura, Yakita Umanhu Elah, the Shays Vin Hon Min Yadoi. Okay, please translate through verse 15, 13 through 15. Um, then King Nebuchadnezzar, in anger and fury, commanded to bring um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men were, the, were then brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar explained and said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not worship my God and that you do not prostrate yourself to the golden statue that I have set up? Now behold, you must be prepared when you hear the sound of the horn, the whistle, the tambourine, the drum, the cymbals, the flute, and all kinds of music to fall and prostrate yourself to the statue I have made. But if you do not prostrate yourself, you will immediately be thrown into a fiery, a burning furnace. And who is the God who can save you from my hands? Well, I, I, I think he, he did not expect that to be a uh, non-rhetorical answer uh, question there. So, <laughs> but uh, oh, it's it's going to uh, be a fun, uh, uh, fun irony here. Okay, so uh, verse 16 in the Aramaic. I know Shadrach, Meshach, Vaved, Nago, Bamrin, Lamalka, Nebuchadnezzar, Lo, Chashkin, Anachna, Aldana, Piskam, La Savusach, Hen Isai Elahana, Di Anachna, Polchin Yachil, La Shez Zavus Sana, Min Atun Nura Yakidta, Umin Yadach Malka Yeshezi, Vain La Yedia Lave Lach Malka Di Elahecha Elahach, La Isana, Polchin. Ulatelam Dava di Hakim Hakim Tala Nisgud. Okay, please translate 16, 17, and 18. Chadrach, Meshach, and Avendnego uh, corresponded and excuse me, responded and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not worried about replying to you about this matter. Behold, our God capital G, whom we worship is able to save us. He will rescue from, from the, the fiery fur, burning furnace and from your hand, O king. But if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that you do not worship our that God. We Oh, that we do not worship our God and to the golden statue. No, that we do not worship your God. But if he, uh, let me start at 18, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry about the English. <laughs> <laughs> I have a four-legged a four -legged in, interruption down here. But if uh, he, in uh, brackets, if he does not 
let it be known to you, O king, that we do not worship your God, and to the golden statue that you have set up, we shall not prostrate ourselves. Just a Are you okay, Rabbi? Uh, just, just a little of pain, uh, but uh, I have medicine being delivered now. In spring. Spring. Okay, all right. Hang, hang in there. Yeah, hang in there, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. <clears throat> Normally, I order my medicine a few days before it runs out, but I guess partially from the illness I'm going through it. And uncharacteristically, I, I uh, thought it was running out next week, this coming week, not last week. So I'm already out of the medicine, and I may be having some symptoms I didn't expect. Okay, so, all right. So they say God will save them, and if not, uh, this, don't don't rescue them. In other words, uh, they're still not going to bow to the to the uh, fake uh, deity. Or, and and it's, it, they don't. Okay, uh, uh, so now it's it's interesting. They connected it to his his God, right? Mm -hmm. The verse in tw verse twelve. Treated the, uh, the uh, fake deity of Nebuchadnezzar as a separate entity from the golden statue. They're answering, We do not worship your God, and to the golden statue that you have set up, we shall not prostrate ourselves. So, in other words, it was a derivative of idolatry, even if not idolatry, and a derivative of idolatry a member of the, the priestly nation must be willing to martyr themselves rather than to worship. If they were B'nai Noach, that's a good question. It, it depends on the nature of this, this statue, but it seems like there may have been room for them uh, to to bow to the statue with with uh, externally. But for, for a... a you know, a, a Jew, it, it, there was just no, there's no room to negotiate. Okay, so now, I mean, it's it's not easy, you know. Not everyone in history, even if they were a Jew, automatically was able to sacrifice their lives for, for God's honor. Uh, you know, the, the whole concept of you heard about Moranos in, in Spain during the Spanish Inquisition, where they invented new tortures to, to anybody who didn't convert. Uh, you know, it was it was uh, not everyone was able to tell their 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 grandchildren to to go sacrifice themselves. It was just it was a horrible a horrible test. Uh, you know that uh, perhaps it, it had great spiritual benefits but really only in in the next world could we probably fully understand it however you know we, we trust god that wh whatever he has must have had a good reason for it nevertheless in the generation of the spanish inquisition there was uh, large groups of people who could not uh, sacrifice themselves again the spanish inquisition they the uh, reactivated some tortures invented by the Romans, and then they added more. You know, without going too much into details, uh, they found a way for for an animal to kill a human slow slowly. So I mean, it it, it you know it's not a regular kind of of death that 
it, it was easier for people to to think about uh, children and grandchildren accepting. You know what I'm saying? So even even Muranos who, who gave it over to idolatry, we, at least externally, we we can't we can't fully judge them by regular standards. You know. So, uh, well, difficult, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were already uh, willing to give their lives. They're on a different level. Okay. Continuing in verse 19. Beidayin Nebuchadnezzar Kismali Hema Utsalem Ankohi Eshtani Al Shadrach Meshach Vavid Nago, and Ane Vamar Lameze Tuna Kad Shiva Al Di Chazei Lameze Lugurin Gibarin Chayel Di Vachaila Amar Lacha Pasa Shadrach Meshach Vavid Nago, Lamemre La Tun Nura Yakimta Yakidta. Okay, please translate verse 19 and 20. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury and the form of his face became contorted at Shadrach, Meshach, uh, Abednego. He, ex he exclaimed and commanded his men to heat the furnace to seven times more than it was normally heated. Then he commanded the strong men of his guard to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to throw them into the fiery furnace, burning furnace, the fiery burning furnace. Then, oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, let me let me catch up. Okay, I'm okay. going to do now uh, verse uh, 21 and 22 in the Aramaic. But uh, we see that Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, was not only a conqueror, he was also had um, anger management issues. Apparently. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fisu Lehon Pat Shehon Lashon Shehon Lego Atun Nura Yakidta. Kol kabel dina di min di milas malka mach tsafa vatuna eze vyatira guvraya ilen di hasiku shadrach meshach vaved nego katil himon shaviva di nura guvraya ilen tla tehon shadrach meshach vaved nego nafalo lego atun nura yakidta Okay, please translate 20 uh, through, through 23. Then these men were bound in their cloaks, their pants, their robes, and their other clothing and were thrown into the fiery burning furnace. Thereupon, because of the king's preemptory command, and because the furnace was so overheated, those men who carried up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were killed by the flame of fire. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the fiery, a burning, fiery burning, fiery burning furnace. Ooh. Okay, continuing verse 24. Okay. Edain Nebuchadnezzar, Malka Tuva, Bukam Behis Behala, Aneva Amar Laha Davrohi, Hala Guvrin Tulasa, Remain Remena Lago Nura, Mahapsin Anaya Anayin, Vamrin Lamalka, Yatsiva Malka, Aneva Amar, Paana Haze Guvrin Arba Arba. Shrayin Mahalachin Bego Nura Vahabal Lo Isai Bahon 
the Reve D Revi Ah the May Levar Elohim. Okay, please translate through verse twenty-five. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, bewildered, stood up in haste. He exclaimed to his ministers and said, Did we not throw three bound men into the fire? They replied and said to the king, True, O king. He ex explained and said, Behold, I see four unbound men walking in the fire, and there is no wound on them. And the appearance of the fourth one is like an angel's. Okay, so, so now I, I want to um, discuss uh, be, to help you answer uh, if somebody tries to uh, mistranslate this. I want to help discuss the, the, the word for or the phrase of it for an angel. Okay, Bar El Lahin. So in um, Rambam's uh, Mishnah Torah, Yad Chazeta, in Hilchas Yisodei Torah, which is the laws of the foundation of the Torah, in chapter two, and Halacha seven, the names of the different angels in heaven are are given. Okay, so now we're not assuming. Nebuchadnezzar understood that, but since uh, a name of the angel is written here, I just wanted us to review uh, the names of angels uh, and that um, so nobody mistranslates this because uh, let, let's first, I'll show you the, the list of the 10 names and then I'll read it. Okay. Okay. The the different names with which the angels are called reflect their spiritual levels. Thus, they are called uh, one, the holy chayos, who are above all the others. Uh, two, the ofanim. Three, the er erelim. Four, the chashmalim. Five, the seraphim. Six, the malachim. That that is mo six most literally translates to angel. Uh, Seven the Elohim. That's this the same word as judges or God. You understand? So whenever you see the word Elohim, it's important to get the translation correctly. Because are you talking about human judges? Are you talking about angels called the Elohim? Or are you talking about the deity himself? Eight sons of the Elohim, which is the, the quoted here, Bar Elohim, in here in Daniel. The Keruvim. The cherubim, like on the um, Ark of the Covenant, and the Ishim. These ten names, uh, Rambam continues, which are used to refer to the angels, reflect their ten different spiritual levels. The level above which there is no higher level except that of God, blessed be he. He is above the form called Chayos. Therefore, the prophets state that they are below the God's throne of glory. The tenth and lowest level is the form called Ishim. They are the angels who communicate with the prophets and are perceived by them with prophetic visions. Therefore, they are called Ishim men because their level is close to the level of human knowledge. So even the angel Gabriel, who destroyed a city by himself, is in the category of the tenth level, lowest category of angel. So imagine what the higher level angels could do. Rabbi, if I may yes. ask a question, if I may ask a question, why, yes. why is it that people 
refer to the angel of day of uh David uh so much and we what angel did uh, the uh I'm sorry I didn't I I, I was trying to hear and I didn't uh, mm -hmm. I didn't catch it but it was it, there's it, it Anyway, I'm gonna have to scrub the question because I I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> You're a humble man, Mark. Um, so let, let me, but let, let me just say, so a literal translation of Bar Elohim is sons of Elohim, and Elohim could be translated as judge, or angel, or God. So son of God is the a, a possible literal interpretation of this phrase. And we don't want that misinterpretation uh, when we're talking about the Bible with so many heretical books of the um, of the New Testament. You know, that's why I took the time to, to mention it. The Rambam goes through the Talmudic sources, the, the Kabbalah, and he brings down all the names for us in order. That, uh, that's pretty cool. Again, that's the Torah, second chapter. Foundations of the Torah, second chapter. Okay, so... Okay, so now uh, the whole purpose of this story, right, is is to show a human sacrificing themselves for a god they don't see for in face of the danger that they do perceive. You see that? So in this context, we want to make sure there's no heretical concepts coming in here. So including the translation. So therefore now you know why I, I went on my way for this. Uh, hope it's understandable to all of you. Okay. All right. Let's continue. Now do the the uh, Aramaic for twenty six and twenty seven. Beidain Kirav Nebuchad Netzar Lisra Atun Nura Yakid Ta Anev Amar Shadrach Meshach Avid Nego Avdohi Di Elaha Ilaa. Haku so Beidain Nafkin Shadrach Meshach Vaved Nago Mingo Nura Umis Kanshin Achad Achash Dar Panaya Signaya Ufacha Vasa Vadavre Malka Zayin the Gubraya Ilech D La Shlate Nura Begesh Begesh Mahon Usar Rashon La His Harach Usar Balehon La Shno Berech Nur La Adas Bahom. Okay, please translate 20, uh, 26 and 27. Then Nebuchadnezzar approached the opening of the fiery burning furnace. He, he ex exclaimed and said, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the supreme God, step out and come here. Thereupon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed Abednego stepped out of the fire. The Sastraps, the nobles, the governors, and the ministers of the king assembled and saw these men over whose bodies the fire had no effect the hair of whose heads was not singed, whose cloaks were unaltered, and who had not absorbed the smell of fire. So it's, it's you know, I find it amazing that, uh, you know, the, the generation with the Moranos in, in um, you know, the Inquisition. Now, of course, many people did give up their lives, al Kiddush Hashem, for God's honor. Uh, in that generation, but the fact that that phenomena did not repeat in every generation that it, throughout their 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 exile, including the Babylonian exile, uh, there were times when Jews were giving up their lives in every generation. Um, now God did a miracle here, but uh, Hananiah, uh, Michelle, and Azariah were were um, were giving up their lives from their perspective you know they, they were confident that god had the power to save 
but they couldn't promise that they would survive. And and in halacha, in um, Samachan Alanes, we don't rely on a miracle. So therefore, they were halachically giving up their lives. Rabbi. Yes. Um, Ron? You mentioned earlier that the king had made a decree earlier that you could uh, follow your religious uh, religious um, prohibition from not not worshiping idols. The judge, uh, the judge, the king, in anger, he uh, decreed death. But had he uh, had he just locked him up, this would have went to trial. And maybe that would have come up to somehow free them. Oh uh, no! The, the the two seconds between him getting angry and getting absolutely furious was his trial. <laughs> was their trial though? <laughs> yeah, that was, was justice just, in the, the Babylonian days. <laughs> I was just thinking about all the the uh, <laughs> the remnant of Israel that was in the maybe in that audience, and uh, had not the three walked out of the fire, they would have been dead. And of course, uh, yeah. those that left were left would, would be under the same uh, prohibition that if they didn't worship, they would be thrown into the fire. So really it was yeah, uh, so a deliverance for the whole nation at that time. Exactly. So, but it was deliverance through three righteous uh, people. So the, the Talmud discusses that uh, Daniel was actually, um, he was uh, sent out to attend affairs of the state. Uh, uh, according to one opinion, he was helping the irrigation of uh, the building of a uh, new branch of a river in a mountain somewhere. And, um, you know, because in the Fertile Crescent, everything was depending on rivers uh, uh, to, to for, for if there was no rain uh, for, for the agriculture. Uh, and that was the... the main way people were, were eating back then um so so god sent daniel out so that more reward would be given to the, the, the these three righteous men who are willing to sacrifice their lives because god normally does a miracle through the righteous so if daniel had been there people would have assumed oh in the merit of daniel uh they were saved right because daniel we see in the gomorrah sanhedrin daniel was considered uh, worthy of becoming Mashiach, um, but uh, he passed away before the Book of Ezra, and then Zerubbabel, his his cousin, became the the uh, potentially a potential uh, messianic figure of that generation until uh, until the um, prophecy of Haggai uh, explained that Mashiach was not coming in that generation because the nation did not return from the exile in enough numbers. Rabbi, mm -hmm. I wonder if the uh, bindings okay. were destroyed in the fire. If who? If the bindings were destroyed in the fire. Oh, the, e either they were or the angel uh, opened them up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, their, their clothing was not singed. Their clothing, clothing was not singed. The, the, the uh, their jailers were were burnt up, so the ropes could have also been burnt up. That that makes sense. But in either case, they were not harmed. Yeah. Uh, no. Thank you, Rabbi. Oh, thank God. Okay, so let's continue. Um, verse twenty-eight. Uh, you already translated through twenty-seven, correct, Teresa? Correct. Okay. Twenty-eight. On a Bala yis gadun lachala lachala lahain le lahahon uminasim te em di cholam uma bulishan di yemar 
שאלו על אל ההון די שדרך משך ואבי נגו, הדמין יסעבד ובייסא הנבלי ישתווה כל כבל די לא יסעי אל החרן די יקול להצלה להצלה כדינה. Okay, please translate through 29. Nebuchadnezzar explained and said, Blessed is the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and saved his servants, who relied on him and disobeyed the king's order and offered their bodies in order not to worship or prostrate themselves to any god other than their god. I issue a decree that any person, nation, or language who will speak amiss about the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut to bits, and their house will be turned into a dunghill. For there is no other God able to rescue in this manner. Well, it's, it's, it's nice to know that uh, Nebuchadnezzar at least learned the concepts of l liberty and, and uh, democracy. <laughs> but uh, uh, on, the, on the other hand, he is, uh, he is using uh, despotic rule for the sake of, of uh, the kingdom of heaven. So it could have been worse. Uh, at least that. Okay, so instead of destroying God's next temple, he's focusing on, on killing anybody who doesn't uh, recognize the God. Whose temple he just destroyed? Okay, <laughs> the man of uh, of uh, zero contradictions apparently. Okay. All right. So. Uh, Don't they call that a little schizophrenic, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe that's how you translate Nebuchadnezzar. Schizophrenic. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Let's, let's sorry, be generous. Sorry. He. He did recognize God in an era when there was paganism, so let's let's yeah. try not to be he insulting. Was, he, he was proven wrong. Uh, he did cruelly kill no. people and threatening God's servants, but uh, okay. Uh, me, me, and Joe are having a dis a disagreement on who and what, and as far as I know, Joe ain't here, so. We're having a disagreement. So anyway, oh, I'm trying to add some humor. Anyway. Okay. That line. <laughs> so now there's so there's two two points I want to make. Um is first I want to make about um the th the three righteous men and then uh about Nebuchadnezzar. But uh we'll first finish up the chapter before we mention that about Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, but uh, the three righteous men. So why exactly would these three righteous men be chosen above Daniel? You know, it's one thing that God wanted to, God knew their potential. He wanted to reward the, the, the maximum limit of their righteousness. But was there another reason that may have also motivated God to, to participate in this? Okay, so if you look in Isaiah chapter 56, verse 4 and 5, verses 4 and 5, Isaiah 56, verses 4 and 5. For thus said Hashem to the barren ones who observe my, my Sabbaths, uh, and, and choose what I desire and grasp my covenant tightly. In my house and within my walls, I will give them a place of honor and renown, which is better than sons and daughters. Eternal renown will I give each one, which will never be terminated. So that's the barren ones. Now, it could, whether it was from, um, whether it was from, uh, you know, whether they didn't get married, whether they got married and they weren't fruitful, or whether they had uh, been harmed and were unable to bear uh, children. Uh, so Nebuchadnezzar in, 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 uh, 
taking these three righteous men to be his servants, the, the first thing he did was make sure to sterilize them. So, some buses are harder to work for than others. But um, so, uh, but these righteous men, they, they, their ability to breed was stolen from them. So, and in Isaiah 56, God promises to give an eternal, eternal a good name greater than children now what can god do for someone these three are just men who for them it was it was almost not a test uh to give up their lives for god's honor and for, for such righteous people to not be able to contribute to to the to the mission of, of israel to, to be a light unto the nations so god found a way to make them have center stage in, in in daniel's book they outshone daniel in this chapter you understand we see daniel do many good things uh you know surviving the lions that was impressive but he didn't choose to walk into the lions then these three righteous men did so that's why this is the spiritual highlight of righteousness in 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 the book of daniel given to these three men and Hashem made it that Daniel was busy out of town so that their righteousness would shine as per the words of Isaiah with an eternal good name. So that's why these three were, were highlighted in this chapter and, and Daniel was somewhere else. Uh, even though we see it in, in the start of the book, they were, the four of them were, were close to each other. Okay, so now let's make one more point about Nebuchadnezzar. First, we'll finish up the chapter. Okay, continuing in verse 31. Um, verse 30. 30, 31, and 32. These three verses. Ve'dayin malka hatzlach l'shadrach meshach v'vein nego b'medinas bavel Nebuchadnezzar malka l'cho ammaya umaya v'yishanaya the Dairin Bukhal Ara Shalamchon Yiske Asaya Vasimhaya di Avad Imi Elaha Ilaa Shafar Kadamai Bachavaya Asohi Kama Ravravin Vasimhohin Kama Sakifin Malchuse Malchus Alam Vashal Tanea in Darvadar. Okay, if uh, you could translate the last three verses of the chapter, Teresa. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. From King Nebuchadnezzar to all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwell throughout the earth, may your peace be abundant. It behooves me to relate the signs and the wonders that the supreme God has performed for me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion for all generations. Amen. Okay, so now... You know, God is generous and to people who leave behind sin and do good, but God wants to give them uh, a new lease on life, a chance to become righteous where, where they used to be with you. As God says in Ezekiel repeatedly, he doesn't desire the, the death of the wicked, rather they return from evil and live. Okay, so uh, now what about Nebuchadnezzar? He he was a, he cruelly killed people. Um, he tortured the king of Judah who rebelled against him. He, you know, he, he he accused these three righteous men of rebelling against him with with a split second movement of anger as the only trial. Uh, that that you know, and but then suddenly he commands 
in the age of paganism, he commands monotheism. Historically, some people recognized monotheism, like uh, Hiram from uh, from uh, Tyre. But uh, but here was a, a law decreed of monotheism. First time outside of Israel, so so it's a confusing message. Um, is what's going on here with Nebuchadnezzar? Is he repenting or is he not? So just to quote one verse from the next chapter, uh, and then we'll we'll pause it here and just take a Q and A. In verse five of the next chapter, uh, Daniel chapter four, verse five. At last there came before me Daniel, whose name is Bel Teshatsar, after the name of, of my God, uh, in whom is the spirit of the holy God, and I related the dream before him. So his fake deity, he calls his God. And the God of Israel, he calls the holy God. So, you know, yeah, the God of Israel, he's holy, you have to be moral, and you have to not be cruel to people and stuff like that. Uh, and then there's his deity <laughs> where he gets to be himself with. Um, so he he was saying, uh, yeah, this is good for other people. And uh, I'm making other people serve him so that he'll have patience with me, even though I destroyed his temple. Now that I know he's real. But he was still looking to have an excuse to sin whenever he wanted to with with cruelty, immorality, whatever it may be, uh, and that is why, why he still made uh, a god he know he knew was fake as his god, and the holy god he didn't call his god. So apparently, it was a superficial decree that uh, may only last until the next time he becomes angry at a Jew. <laughs> but, but while it was there, uh, it was. Uh, a, a historic act of uh, a, a legal law by a Gentile nation decreeing that people accept the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. However, he interpreted that that to be, you know. Um, so, but apparently, he he felt no allegiance to to God and no no imperative to give up his idolatry. He already did God a favor by uh, by decreeing people worship him. So, you know, that should be enough. <laughs> he should be able to get away with whatever evil he wants to do. Uh, apparently, that was his attitude. So it was not a repentance by Nebuchadnezzar, which is unfortunate. Because, again, he, he did a historic good thing. But, unfortunately, he had so many acts of cruelty before that. It's like expecting... Um, expecting uh, an abortion doctor to become the uh, paragon saint to the next day you know he has a long road of repentance ahead of him but it's it's possible for him to to uh be, eventually find forgiveness you know especially like in the case of an abortion doctor he he saves lives instead of uh, takes them right so the Vanessa didn't seem to show any you know he was like teflon spiritually towards towards the concept of holiness uh, he just wanted to to uh, placate God by encouraging people to worship him as as a deity not as the deity he he didn't say call him uh um the the king of all king the king of all kings the god of all gods that all gods and and people who worship gods must worship he called them he called them simply the holy God in in this in, in at the start of this chapter, now he also would, would would go on to call God the supreme God. So uh, when we get to that part of the 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 uh, book of Daniel, we'll we'll discuss it inside. So, but it, so so far we, we we're we're kind of getting an idea of who this Nebuchadnezzar is. Uh, he, again, his his concept of a courtroom is uh, the two seconds between uh, anger and utter wrath. So that that's his that's his uh, form of. Uh, uh, jurisprudence uh, it's uh, unfortunate and but uh, it's it's amazing god could take 
someone like that and change the world with, you know, and, and even affect some good things too. Despite his worst efforts, <laughs> he, he was eventually cause for, for God's good occurring in the world. Uh, yeah, Owen wrote he was like a politician. Uh, yeah, 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 I guess yeah, he had a political... Uh, it, it wasn't even a political repentance. He did not say he's sorry. He didn't say, oh, I'm sorry I, I threw your servants in the fire. He didn't even say that. He assumed an absolute right to do it, and he has a right to do it again. You know, and if God wants them to be saved, he could save them again. That, that's like the kind of attitude he seemed to have of Nebuchadnezzar. You understand? So, in, uh, in other words, there was, a, it was at the basic level there was an arrogance where he considered himself practically on on the level of of a god himself, uh, where he can choose anything he so chose. He, uh, deep down, he probably understood that his fake God was less was less than he was. So it was hard for him not not to be arrogant. It's a consequence of idolatry. The the worshiper is greater than than the fake God, obviously. So therefore, how do they become humble? Whereas with a God who saves people from from a raging flame, you know that's greater than human. So now there, there's a, there could be a moment of contrition or humility, but Nebuchadnezzar found a way to not let that affect him. And so we have to do the opposite of Nebuchadnezzar and say, this was a huge miracle. God saved people in a miraculous way. And he saved them because they tried to serve him. Yeah, and now Ron is asking a question. Can you talk about a minion? And do we have one with men and women here today for prayers for our teach? Oh, oh, <laughs> you're talking about me. <laughs> prayers for me. Well, don't worry. God's in control. I'm, I'm on the path to um, healing anyway. Even if you pray from your homes, that's enough. But um, so uh, the doctor gave a very favorable uh, prognosis. And um, so the, the treatments, uh, the you know, chemotherapy are round, rounding up. And um, after uh, a few weeks later, there will be a, uh, a scan to confirm everything is uh, in order. But um, thank God. So this month, it seems we're, we're ending the, uh, uh, the chemotherapy. So that's good because then... Uh, you know, after the chemotherapy, it's it's hard for me to concentrate sometimes, you know, or may I not have energy. Uh, so that therefore, hopefully, we can have more consistent classes. That's why I try to get in today's class for the next chemotherapy, and then uh, the one to two weeks. Uh, normally, it would be um, recovery time to to be able to teach a class, but because there's an accumulative effect which is good against the, the bad stuff, but the cumulative effect could also have a negative effect about the ability to teach. So it could be anywhere from one to, to four weeks before the next class. Theoretically next week, but more likely we would be two weeks, which I believe is the first of September. Um, that's probably the more likely time for the next class, but it's also possible it may not be for another uh, three or four weeks. Oh, we'll t we'll play it by ear, see how it goes. Um, now after after I'm fully recovered, which may it may take a couple of months to get fully recovered, so we're probably going to go back to a Saturday night class. Uh, but for now, I, I need daytime hours because my energy level just drops off sometimes. All right. So uh, any other other questions before we call it a uh, class? No. Thank you so much, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. We Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Rabbi. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.